It's Tuesday, Tuesday the 14th of February 2017, and you are listening to the Paul Clark Podcast. So in case it's passed you by, in case it's escaped your interest, today is actually Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. The time for lovers and lovebirds and couples. When when couples share Valentine's cards with I love you in big capital letters um, on the cover. Or they or, or, or some love struck teenager buys a stupid teddy bear for some girl with a big heart on it. Um as you can probably tell, this is uh, I, I, I am not a big fan of Valentine's Day. And you might look at it as well. Look, that's just because, Paul, no one loves you. And you're not loved by anybody. And you don't love anybody. Well, to be, to be fair, you know, just a few years ago, I would have agreed with that. But I am so glad and so happy to be young, free and single. To have no commitments to anybody whatsoever. To me, there is nothing more terrifying than the prospect of um, of being betrothed to somebody. Of being committed to someone. And in particular, the pressures that a day like today brings. Where more so than ever, you're encouraged to show your love and devotion to your partner and and you just think for what for what just to basically feed the high street so they can burn another hole in my pocket in my wallet i don't think so i don't think so i mean i'm all up for christmas i love christmas big fan of christmas but christmas is a national slash international holiday it's universal for everybody Valentine's Day isn't. It's an exclusive club for uh, for lovers, for lovebirds, for people who are all partoned up. And it can be a very um, difficult time for someone that isn't partied up with somebody. I mean, people say, well, you know, Christmas can be a very lonely time for someone. Um, yeah, OK, it can. It can. But as I said, Christmas is a universal thing. There's always something. That, that, I always believe that there's something for everybody on Christmas. You know, so it doesn't matter um, what your background, what your faith, what your belief is. I think Christmas is... Christmas to me is beyond a religious festival. It's just a time when people for once are actually nice to each other and try to get on. And it's not about the presents. I mean, that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn down a good old present. But it's not. To, it, to me, it's not the essential part of it. Whereas what Valentine's Day is about, it's about basically giving presents to somebody that you shouldn't need to give a present to. You know, if you love them, just tell them you love them. Shouldn't you do that every day anyway? But these are all the things you see that, that, that turn me off. The idea, the mere prospect of being in a relationship. Nah. I, 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 I generally think I, I am a commitment phobe. I couldn't do it in no way, shape or form. And, uh, and as I said, the pressures that this day in particular puts upon somebody. And it has to be said, particularly guys, there is immense pressure from guys to um to meet the standard that a lady a woman your girlfriend your partner um is expecting on this day i mean they say that you know oh it doesn't matter i don't want anything secretly they want something because when they get into the office and they see their work colleague with a big stupid teddy bear with a heart and some chocolates. Um, it's like they're going to think, oh, I mean, I did say to him that I didn't want anything, but did he have to take it so literally? You know, so 
Make no mistake, when she tells you that she doesn't want anything, secretly she does. Secretly, she does. And listen, I mean, a lot of my friends are in relationships, and, and, and good luck to them. You know, if, if that's what they want to do, that is their absolute right. If they want to celebrate this day and show each other how much they love them, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But for me, it's a time that I just look at as, well, an unnecessary expense. Now, there is another side to this. Um, and trust me, by the way, guys. It's such a free, you know, it's such a liberating experience when you come out the other end and you realise, you know what, I don't need it. I don't need to be in a relationship. It doesn't bother me. And being single is actually far better than being um, being partnered it up. You know, it's so much more, it's so much more liberating and it's so much, it's just better. Being single is better than being in a relationship. But to get to that realisation, like I have in the last year or two, um, it's been a long haul. It's been a long haul. Because just a few years ago, I was I was dating app crazy. You know, there, there was a week when I had about five or six different dates. And they were all just terrible. Every single one just, you know, disaster after disaster after disaster. And uh, and the pressure that it puts on a guy, you know, and I mean, and obviously this says a lot about me, but I'm the kind of guy that feels that pressure, believe it or not, to uh, to basically make a good impression. And Muggins here, of course, has to pay the bill, you know, at the end of the meal or has to pay for the cinema tickets, or has to buy the chocolates. And I think we've all been hardwired that way, thanks to, well, thanks to things like Valentine's Day, thanks to terrible movies like Love Actually, and uh, and crap like Titanic and all that. I mean, don't even get me started on that, by the way, because I saw that's on today. I think it's on one of the movie channels, Titanic. It's like, ugh, please. You know, you have taken an actual historical event and you've turned it into Romeo and Juliet. You've turned it into a fucking love story, James Cameron. What the fuck are you playing at? I mean, that you know, that, that awful scene when it's like, hey, Jack, I wouldn't you, could you draw my picture? And she's sitting there bollock naked on the bed. It's like, okay, um, can we get back to the actual subject matter here of an actual event um that actually physically happened and not be worrying about slutty kate winslet with pretty boy uh what what the fuck is his name um oh leonardo dicaprio that's it um can we not be bothered with those two and their lovey dovey crappy want to make you throw up storyline you know because it, it, it it's false you know, and it's just to basically get the woman, get the chicks, you know, uh, on the seats in the cinema. The fact that t- the, the events of Titanic is actually um, a real historical tragedy and a subject that on and off throughout my life I've had a, a bit of a fascination for. It's probably the biggest engineering disaster um, of, um, of our times, really, of human history. You know, this ship, this amazing vessel that uh, was going to revolutionise um, the way people travel across the oceans. On its one and only trip, hits an iceberg and plunges to the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. That in itself is a fascinating story without throwing in there the love angle. But again, you know, it's this, it's this pressure, as it were, um, to... I mean, what is it they always say? Sex and romance sells. When in doubt, just throw in a love story, or or, or you know, or, or or make it, or, or make your cast young, hip, and sexy, at the expense of stories, at the expense of good writing. I mean, you look at half the cast of Hollyoaks. You know, oh, they're all pretty people, but they can't act for shit. They can't act for shit. Anyway, I'm, I'm going off on a complete tangent here, aren't I? But, but you, you understand what I'm trying to say. You understand what I'm trying to say. That relationships, love, you know, being, being partnered up with somebody 
I think all these things are fed into us as to how important they are from a very early age, from films like Titanic, from days like today, like Valentine's Day. And if you're somehow not within that club, if you're not, you know, fortunate or unfortunate, as I call it, to be with somebody, um, you're the odd one out. Somehow, you're the odd one out. And to me, it's like, no, it's it's actually, when you realise, guys, as I said, it's such a free and such a liberating thing when you come to the conclusion of, no, do you know what? Uh-uh. I'm actually, the, I'm in the right here. I've got it all sorted out. I'm, no, I, I, I'm, I'm normal. It's everyone else that is stupid for being in a relationship, in my opinion. Now, talking of the pressures of Valentine's Day, I just want to briefly uh, um, end the podcast on this note. Um, a friend of mine shared a, a video with me today from a, from a YouTube blogger who we actually have a bit of a history with, um, but, uh, but I'll get into that another day. Um, but this guy... Well, to be honest with you, he's like most of us, really. A uh, single guy who finds it hard to find somebody. Has been finding it hard to get a girlfriend. And because of the pressures of today, he decided that he had to do a YouTube video where he pretty much opened up his heart and talked about uh, the fact that at school, girls didn't look at him, really. He's always found it hard to, to be sociable with girls, Um, and he's really at the moment in love with this current girl. I think she's a YouTube blogger as well. Um, I'm not sure if they've met. I think they have actually, I'm not sure. Um, and he loves her and he wants, you know, he wants to be a Valentine and you just think, ah, the poor guy, the poor guy that he felt he had to humiliate himself like that so publicly. Because of one stupid day. And all the pressures that are put on you by the high street. By television. By films. By those stupid, lovey, dovey songs on the radio. Like, what was it I heard this morning as I was leaving? As I was going to work. Uh, the radio was on in the background. And, uh, and I could hear Atomic Kitten. Is this burning... Uh, what is it? Is is it? Um, is this burning a flame or something like that? I don't know. Anyone who knows their music will know what I'm talking about. Um, but it was like, oh come on, you know, could you be any more obvious? You know, I mean, could you at least try and be subtle about it, please? Radio One or whoever was playing that crap. I mean, why the hell I was listening to uh, to commercial radio in general uh, is open for some debate. Um, but um, but the fact that that they put these subliminal messages out there and you feel this pressure to uh, to meet a standard that is required, which is to give somebody a Valentine's Day card. Buy some girl a stupid teddy bear with I love you. It's, and I'm saying what it does to people, particularly guys, what it does to their minds is, uh, it's quite dangerous, you know. It's quite dangerous. But then when you get to, as I say, when you reach the point that I've reached to, because look, just a few years ago, and I'm actually I'm running out of time, so I need to say this quickly, but just a few years ago, uh, I was moping about the place. I had joined up on a load of dating apps, and I was searching to try and find the one. And then eventually I came to the conclusion of, do you know what? No, 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 no. I, I've got it figured out. Being single is the best way. Keep it simple. Keep life sweet, simple and easy. Don't overcomplicate it by adding in unnecessary baggage. For that, dear listener, is just for me what a relationship and what a woman is. Unnecessary baggage. Thanks for listening to the Poor Clark Podcast.